we're going to break down how to refinance your first investment property from start to finish. So uh, let's say I've bought my first investment property and I've done some strategic renovations and now I'm looking to refinance. So what are some of the things that I would need to have prepared in order to take that next step in my project? Yeah, I think one quick step I want to touch on first before we talk about the first refinance is just your first mortgage in general and how important it is to make sure that that is set up properly. Um, you know, I, I don't know about Josh, but I've had a few clients in the last few months where we're looking to refinance a property and they were put into a mortgage that um, you know has some clauses in it that don't uh, don't allow for that flexibility. So they have some sort of um, like bona fide sale clause or some mortgages that um, are stuck being able to be financed only into uh, another version of that specific mortgage product that they have already. So you know, setting up the proper first mortgage and making sure that you have the flexibility to exit out fully and get into any other product is a really crucial step because you know if you're stuck not being able to refinance your entire you know financial strategy moving forward is kind of cut wash. So that, that first mortgage on the purchase is really the most important one and setting up your ability to refinance down the road. Usually what most people find is, or what we find is, um, usually the people are enticed by the lowest rate on the market. So what's gonna happen right. is we call bare bones mortgages or low rate mortgages. And they're gonna be those big signs that everybody sees that has the lowest rate possible. And you know, you drive by, you're like, yeah, it's a really low rate because there's these things that have bona fide sale clauses in them that kind of handcuff you into your, your mortgage. So when you are looking to make your first investment, as Aaron said, just be mindful about how you set that up because it could affect your ability to be able to refinance and scale your portfolio. Um, so you know, always just something to keep in mind right off the bat because the lowest rate doesn't always mean the best option. Right. And what are some of those sales clauses to watch out for? If if I'm to get a mortgage, what are some of those things that I should stay away from if my end strategy is a refi? Sure. So you're, you're essentially going to want to stay away from a bona fide sale clause, which essentially means you have to sell your property or wait to the end of the term to be able to restructure your debt. Um, additionally, I would say you want to stay away from a fixed term. You know, fixed terms are going to give you the highest penalty to break your mortgage. It's something called an interest rate differential cost. Um, compared to where a variable term has a three month interest penalty. Yeah. And, and again, like this is, um, you know, the fixed rate discussion, it really comes down to uh, like just having your mortgage broker understand your goal. Um, if you know you're going to be in that property for one year and you want to lock it in for one year fixed, you know, I mean, a fixed rate in that case is bad, but uh, most people take a five year fix. And like Josh said, if you go into a five year fix and you're looking to exit out in that first year, you know, you're going to have a quite a hefty uh, mortgage exit penalty. So, um, just being very specific and deliberate with that first mortgage product. Um, Josh touched on that about the bona fide sale clause. If if you ask your mortgage broker, you know, what are my prepayment privileges? And he says you don't have any, you're probably in a mortgage that you're not gonna be able to leave or it's gonna be super, super expensive to get out of. Um, like I said, there are some mortgages that they have a bona fide sale clause where you can't fully exit, but you can refinance into the exact same product. Um, MCAP has one of them, it's called like the Value Flex. Anytime you hear something like value flex or bare bones or, you know, like Josh rate said, those, plus. yeah, rate option plus, double check with your mortgage broker, you know, just say, hey, I just want to make sure I'm not in something that's going to lock me in there. Um, and then I do have the flexibility to exit because, you know, we are seeing it and um, you're not everyone knows about it. You know, sometimes the mortgage brokers aren't aware that some of these AAA lenders have these products that lock you in um, and it may not be you know, outlined in black and white in the commitment. So just double check, ask them to double check with, you know, if they aren't sure and you're working with somebody who doesn't know, you know, have them go back to the lender and just verify that you are going to be able to exit out of that. So. Absolutely. I appreciate the setup from the beginning is really important. So some of the things that could go wrong by the sounds of it is that there would just be significant penalties to actually refinance out and that you would actually be paying the difference in the interest that you had committed to during that term. So if you are locked in for a five year fixed term, you would be paying the interest on that commitment uh, that would have gone over the five years. Is that how that works? Yeah, you're essentially paying the difference in what the lender would have earned um, from you exiting out now I mean you can really get into it and take a look at the market you know if you happen to have got yourself into a five-year fixed and you are in an inclining interest rate market you might actually catch a lucky break and be able to get away with um, either a minimal payment or closer to a three months payment 
because if the interest rates are increasing from where your current mortgage is, um, the, the lender's not missing out on interest, they would actually gain some of that payment. So sometimes you might catch a lucky break. Now, if you are in a declining interest rate, so if you had bought a mortgage, you know, let's say three, four years ago when rates were three and a bit on the AAA side, and now you're trying to refinance into a 1.45, yeah, you're gonna have that interest rate differential penalty. So um, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have higher costs to break um, or you know a very tough time being able to break if you're in that bona fide sale clause. You can ask for an exception. 98% of the time, they're not gonna give it to you. So just, just making sure. Um, you know, one thing to keep in mind too is on that initial purchase, if it is a primary residence um, or an owner-occupied rental, how much are you putting down on the property? If you put less mm -hmm. than 20% down, you're you know, really mitigating how much equity you have in the property. You're going to have to force appreciate the property that much more to be able to pull out that equity. Whereas if you're putting 20% down, you know every single dollar on top of that is equity that you can pull out. So just paying attention to your equity position, making sure you're in the right situation.